so yeah, that's the thing about R&B, as you can see, um, and that's the reason it's on the timeline, is because, you know, the switch to the term R&B was industry motivated. It's not necessarily, you know, what artists were calling it. Um, you know, I think with uh, many of the terms, you know, they may or may have not have been already used in by the artists and the communities who consume the music, um, but the primary switch was industry related. Um, for Billboard, it was you know more of a political thing um, as far as seeing the term race record or race music as being outdated. But um, once again, I think to some degree, you know, it was marketing slash um, optics and not necessarily the recognition of the evolving musical form. So it's just something that's interesting to uh, take note of and it'll be a reoccurring theme throughout R&B and rock and roll it already has been as we've discussed with some of our previous artists talking about jump blues and you know as we kind of move through the timeline how some of those songs sound a lot like R&B and some of them have rock and roll elements as well so uh, you know something just to keep in mind um, and further expanding on that um, just looking at the R&B charts and how they kind of evolve specifically with Billboard um, I think it's a pretty good indicator because I think when you talk about genre you know all of the genres have not only like the musical structure but there's also a cultural component and what you know who, how people view at least especially from the industry perspective how people view the people who are going they think are going to consume the records um, so that kind of all plays together um, but I think specifically in this case when you look at the R&B charts as they've evolved um, on Billboard um, kind of just shows you it, it just makes you think about genre I think because I think a lot of times um, especially you know nowadays when there are so many genres um, and different categories you know you don't people will say a genre as if they're defining, you know, a certain type of music. And and historically, I think sometimes we don't think about how those genres, each genre was kind of delineated or separated and put into a category. And um, that's one of the primary reasons, well not, it is a, a reason why um, the timeline is structured in the way it is and why there's a specific emphasis on like the blues as being the foundation because as we move forward you know the blues was really a term you know used by the community and by the musicians and it was labeled by the industry as race music so now you know you're not necessarily acknowledging the blues name at any point to a certain, turn it to a certain extent now you're kind of saying rhythm and blues so it's in there um, but now we're really getting into industry labels now that it's been brought from, you know, originally the rural blues was, you know, originally a very rural, uh, musical tradition and, you know, moved into cities, um, urban atmospheres. And that's also where, you know, the industry resides. And so all of a sudden, you know, it's becoming a bigger and bigger, um, business and, uh, you know, getting more and more popular so now the industry has shifted from race music to calling it R&B um, and it's not necessarily what uh, the creators of the music would have named it and it's not necessarily you know recognizing a clear shift into R&B the sound um, that's why you know with rock and roll this you know it's all created retrospectively as far as people there's just you know they're like among the music aficionados or you know people who are really into it when you talk about rock and roll there's like a huge list of songs over history over the history of like which is the a first rock and roll song because there's you know different elements um, of rock and roll you know people will say like back to the 1920s even 
Um, I think once we get on our timeline, I think it's, a lot, you know, in the 1950s, as far as what we consider rock and roll, I think it's pretty clear cut by then. Um, but I think part of that whole battle is just, you know, it's, if you take a step back, it's, it's kind of like, and the reason we focus on the, the timeline, the uh, blue lineage is called the blue lineage, is just because the blues was intentional, and then as you take a step back, it's almost a natural evolution, this whole growth into what we get to in the end of uh, the timeline, which is hip-hop. Um, if you just recognize it from a cultural and uh, musical perspective, it's almost a natural evolution into what it became uh, versus kind of the industry kind of categorizing it and doing what it wants to to market uh, music as time goes on. And when you look at the R&B charts, it really, um, I think, highlights this. And uh, um, so early in with Billboard uh, in the 1930s, um, the what I th what over time evolved into the R&B and hip hop charts. It started out as the Harlem Hit Parade. Uh, that was the first label um, that people will ascribe that you know continued to evolve into what we know as the R&B hip hop charts today, um, which was uh, which was specifically the Harlem Hit Parade was specifically referring to Harlem at the time and just because um, in Harlem uh, which was also where you know Tin Pan, Tin Pan Alley was which we talked about very early on and so that whole area was just a place where uh, you know music the industry was thriving in general and you know you have to think about during that time with the limitation of inter you know, communication between cities and the United States in general you know, the big markets are going to be the market that kind of defines everything. And so, in this case, in New York, you know, you have Harlem. And that was where, for um, the black or African-American music scene, everything was uh, really evolving. And there was a significant um, presence of just artists in general, including music. And so, the Harlem Hit Parade... Uh, chart you know was the first kind of iteration of charting and documenting you know what was uh, a hit at the time and then after that uh, it moves to race music or race records as we've talked about um, now on billboard race music started first being released as race music back when we first talked about uh, W.C. Handy and uh, Mommy Smith, um, but Billboard didn't really take that on until 1945, which was only like a short while before it switched over to R&B. Um, so, so from 1945 to 1949, we have race records, and then in 1949 or 48, as we just talked about, um, they added uh, art, rhythm and blues charts. And then it um, switched to Ripple and Blue, Blue's sides and keep getting various, you know, between cycles between hot R&B sides and singles and different names until we get to 1969 where it switches to uh, best-selling soul singles. And, of course, soul is... Um, people consider soul differently. Um, some people consider it as like a specific sound. Um, closely related to R&B. Some people consider it as a specific um, influence of gospel on R&B. A lot of gospel singers came over um, once R&B really got going and became uh, very successful and they were more so considered to be soul singers. Some people just consider that time period of R&B as soul. Um, some people cons just consider soul as a subgenre of R&B, um, which is like one of the main reasons why soul isn't on the timeline is just because, you know, R and B really encapsulates it. Um, you know, a lot a lot of subgenres could have been included um, within the timeline, but uh, we try to stick to pretty core um, the core genres. And so we have 
the best selling soul singles, we have hot soul singles, and then in 1982, it's the chart switched to hot black singles. And so, you know, it's just important to keep in mind, uh, you know, kind of this transition um, and evolution of the chart. You know, you're kind of going from race records, and now we're back to hot black, hot black singles, which, you know, it's very race based. And so the whole evolution of the chart, um, you know, it's almost as if it's sort of a, we know who the audience is and we're just changing sort of these placeholders as far as what the, what we're going to call it. And then so in 1990 it switches back to hot R&B singles and then finally in 99 it becomes hot R&B and hot and hip hop singles and tracks. And so, you know, at that point you know, it's interesting that's 1999 because hip hop is, you know, well, you know, has been developed and been popular for a while now. It's, it's you know, well into the, the existence of hip hop. And so, once again, you know, just like with R&B, you can debate um, what the first R&B track is. You can debate what the first rock and roll track is I mean at this point with in 1999 I think everybody you know it's a different it's a different world at this point where you know um, a genre doesn't need necessarily need the validation of the industry to be you know be called what it is and hip-hop kind of was defined is was defined by the artists and people community who made it you know hip-hop is a whole culture and similar with funk we'll talk about funk later but Funk kind of just kind of gets glossed over a little bit, um, but even though it's the foundation of hip hop, it's interesting. That's, that's a something we'll get into. It's an interesting discussion, but just, the the point of it is, is is just to look at the how the R and B charts or however you want to call it um, evolved into the R and B and hip hop um, charts, um, and just taking notice that. Uh, you know, it's not necessarily, when we talk about genres, it's not necessarily that these artists came and were creating new genres. It's more so that a music was evolving naturally and then people were kind of naming it as it became commercially viable. Um, you know, another area you could talk about is the Grammys in reference to genres, I mean, I think the Grammys, you know, is kind of, is kind of messy, um, cause you know, with the Grammys are bringing in like a committee and so it gets really political. So not, not only do you have genres and, um, you know, genres and all these different sub genres and categories, um, but you also have a committee. So things get altered there as well um, and I know with the with the Grammys you also get they also have I don't know if they still have the urban categories but you know you get into the same thing basically um, it's just a little bit more convoluted in my opinion I don't really pay close attention to the Grammys anymore so I can't really comment on it in depth but you know it's just when you just look at these uh, placeholders or categories it just you know it's something to, it's an interesting discussion something to think about um, especially as we move to the timeline there'll be more instances where we see uh, music that kind of sounds like maybe it could be in a different category um, and then we're seeing music that kind of exists before it's supposed to exist type situation uh, so that was just an important note, I think, as we begin to enter into what is kind of the acknowledged um, time of R&B.